Kubernetes time! There we go, here we are. We're starting the new Kubernetes series. So the point of this series is to help you hopefully go from a beginner to close to being an expert on Kubernetes itself. I also want to explain why we use Kubernetes, what it is, which is what this video is, and you know maybe even give you the tools to pass the exams. So there's the CKA, which is the Certified Kubernetes Administrator exam. There is the CKAD, which is the Certified Kubernetes Application Developer exam. And there's the CKS, which is the Certified Kubernetes Security Specialist exam. I really want to help you try and pass those exams. Now, I'm not saying you will pass those exams using these videos, but I am hoping to give you the tools to at least attempt to. Now, I have passed the CKA exam. It took me two tries. I'm not ashamed to admit. The first time, I didn't really read the prep questions properly. I messed up a few things that I probably shouldn't have done, but I did all the same. And the second time round, I realized that I need to read the questions properly. I need to focus on the harder questions, the higher scoring questions first, and then come back to the easier ones last, because those easy ones I can fly through in no time. A little bit of a tip there. I'm actually going through the CKS one right now. I'm hoping to have it booked within the next month or two. We will see. If I do, I'll let you know. Let's get into what Kubernetes is. So what is it? Well, I'm glad you asked, Kat. As you can see, I've got the website open here, and it says right at the top, production grade container orchestration. And that's what Kubernetes is. Only joking. Okay, maybe not. Let's carry on a bit. So yeah, it's it's open source. It's something that came from Google. And basically it's a way of managing containers on, as it says, a planet scale, because it can scale across multiple data centers, across multiple regions, across multiple countries. You can run it anywhere it runs in windows it runs on mac it runs on linux it runs anywhere i had someone contact me via twitter once and they wanted to set up their kubernetes cluster on their qnap nas and i helped them set that up if you've got a vm or you've got a system you can set this up it runs anywhere and the website will give you a lot of information but if i scroll down a little bit further here you can see some of the features so it has automated rollouts and rollbacks which means you can roll an app out and you can pause it during the rollout if you see an issue and if you need to you can roll it back so that's a really useful feature it has service discovery and load balancing which means that as i'm going to explain in the next video you can deploy a pod which is a collection of one or more containers. And the service that sits above that can automatically discover as many pods as get replicated. So if I have one pod, the service will forward traffic to that. If I have 10 pods under one service, the service will load balance the traffic to all of those pods. Those pods will be exactly the same. The containers within those pods will be exactly the same and they will all work in exactly the same way. It has self-healing. So self-healing is should a pod suddenly show itself as not being ready or maybe something goes wrong in the pod and it you know just stops working the way it should do kubernetes will kill that pod and rerun it little caveat there you have to set up readiness and liveness probes and things like that to make sure that you're checking the status of your pod and that it's working properly yeah it can heal itself it will restart containers if they're not working properly now storage orchestration as it says here you know it, basically you can use storage from multiple different places you can use onboard storage you can use aws storage google storage ceph storage cinder storage you name it if you can think of the storage name it's probably supported by kubernetes it has secrets and config maps or configuration management and that's for storing secrets like usernames and passwords things like that however it's worth noting that secrets aren't actually encrypted in any way other than on the ETCD backend, which again, we'll get into later, but you can store secrets and usernames, passwords, things like that, that, that can then be injected into the containers within those pods. And the configuration management is things like you could store an Nginx configuration within a config map and then mount that into a pod and it will then use that configuration. You can do jobs and batch execution. It supports IPv4 and IPv6. It has a horizontal and vertical scaling, um, which means it can add more pods on demand and it can add more nodes on demand if you install something like the cluster autoscaler. Yeah, it's, it's basically, it's a huge ecosystem for running containers at a massive scale. That's what it's for. Now you can go through this website a little bit more and read up more on it if you want to. I honestly, if you're gonna be doing the exam, I cannot recommend that enough because in the exam, you're allowed to use this website. So it's really good to get into the documentation pages, start going through some of the getting started concepts, tasks. Now it doesn't flow, start at this point, step one, and then move through. So you're really gonna have to think about what it is you wanna do, search for how to do that thing in the search here, and then make a bookmark of that because you will be able to use bookmarks in the exam. You will be able to use this website 
website and a couple of other ones and you will kind of be expected to do a bit of copy and pasting so you know make make use of it find something if you want to know how to let's say set up ha cluster using cube adm we can search for that and we can go to here and as long as it's on the kubernetes website which we can see here kubernetes docs set up there it is creating a highly variable clusters with cube adm and as you can see we're in the bootstrapping section here and there's a lot of sub menus here but if you think this might be useful to you then bookmark it and you'll be able to use it later and i guarantee it will be useful for you because there will be things in here like external etcd nodes and you are going to need to be able to know how to query these sorts of things and do backups and restores all of which is in the documentation so you can do um backing up etcd and if we have a look in here we've got operating etcd clusters we've got a discussion section here just make sure it's supported um, but i'm going to go to this bit because i know it's part of the documentation and if we come over to the menu on the right hand side here, we can see there's a backing up an ETCD cluster there. And then you've got these commands here. So these are important things to know. You're going to need to know how to back up and restore ETCD as well as interact with it in other ways. So I highly recommend getting used to this documentation if you're considering the exam. If you're not, then I still recommend it because it's got a lot of tutorials in there. It's got references in there. It's got API overviews. It's got some concepts about how things will work, including how to use it in Windows and the general cluster architecture. And if we go to the cluster architecture, we can look there's different elements to it there's nodes there's communication between things there's the controllers that are there so the controllers are uh, different elements of the cluster so there's an api server in kubernetes which is the thing you interact with there is a kube controller manager which is essentially a collection of controllers such as the deployment controller the replica set controller we'll get into all this in later videos there is the scheduler which is responsible for scheduling things onto nodes there's the kubelet that sits on the node which is responsible for making containers real and then there's things like kube proxy which is responsible for making the ip table rules or the ipv well the firewall rules let's say um real in terms of on the nodes for the services so when the service is created there will be ip table rules or whichever firewall you use it created on the nodes to allow traffic to flow between them essentially now in my linux videos that i did in the previous series we didn't cover ip tables and firewalls it's something i probably should have done but i didn't get around to doing and don't worry about that if you don't know what i'm talking about here because we will cover these things more as we get deeper into kubernetes itself so don't worry too much about that. But yeah, have a look through this. There's a lot of information. Don't get me wrong. There is a heck of a lot of information on Kubernetes. I mean, you can see there's a huge documentation section. So it's worth just having a look through, getting used to the format of the documentation, knowing where certain things are that you want to be able to do. Just simple things as well, like deploying a pod. It's good to know this because you will be required to do things like that. So we can go to pods here. It'll tell you what a pod is. It will tell you how to use a pod. And you could literally in the exam, copy and paste that if, if they ask you to deploy an Nginx pod. So yes, Kubernetes is wide ranging. There's a lot of information that I could go into in this video, but obviously this is a brief overview. We're going to get into how to use Kubernetes, how to set it up a lot more and just what it is as we go through this series. So don't worry if you still don't understand what it is. I wouldn't expect you to in the first video. And if you do, well done, good student. I'm probably going to leave it at that because I could just talk all the way through this documentation for hours because it is huge but we are going to go further into kubernetes what it is how it works and more throughout this series so let's get into it and there we have it that's basically it it's a really short video because answering the question what is kubernetes is quite a short answer how do you use kubernetes and why do we use kubernetes well that extends it a little bit further so in the next video we're going to talk about why we use it and then we'll move on to things like how to install a cluster, how to install tools locally so we can do development locally without having to need a cluster. And then going on to security items, how to deploy things into clusters, secrets and config maps and volume management and even more. So I'll see you in the next one.